Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of my home into yours. Welcome to my channel. If you like what I talk about, please like, subscribe and share. Um, today is um, titled, Are You an Accidental American? Which seems to be a strange title. And how can you be an American and not know about it? The thing is, what the problem is with this is that you can actually be liable for tax. The US is already closing or putting stops on UK bank accounts because of accidental Americans. People who left America ages ago and didn't formally notify the United States. And they are called, and they, they, they might not just be coming to the UK, they could be leaving America and going anywhere but they haven't formally closed that tie with the United States, i.e. paid an exit fee and all other requirements. So they then become accidental um, Americans. And the HMRC are fighting a battle with the United States because they're trying to get access to bank accounts um, because these people left without paying taxes. Or an exit tax. So I'm going to read it because um, that will make more sense and it's more fluid and I'll find the link and put it below. Okay, the title is HMRC Fights for Rights of Accidental Americans in the UK. HMRC is facing a legal battle to block it from handling personal details about British citizens to US tax authorities. The case could have wide-ranging implications for tens of thousands of so-called accidental Americans who left the US when they were months or years old, but risk having their British bank accounts frozen for failing to comply with the US tax requirements. What is an accidental American? An accidental American is a citizen of a country other than the United States who may also be considered a U.S. citizen or eligible for U.S. citizenship under U.S. nationality law, but is not aware of having such status or has only become aware of it recently during adulthood. And I think, thought this was such an important topic to share with you because this could apply to a number of people. Accidental Americans' U.S. citizenship arises due to their parents' ties to the United States rather than their own choices. They may be born in their own country, but to one U.S. citizen parent who immigrated from the United States. Or they may be born in the United States to parents residing in the country temporarily for work or study and then return to their own country in their early childhood with few, if any, memories of the United States. So you know what? This means that if your parent went to America for work or study, got pregnant, had you, then they went back to their country and they didn't tell the United States that they were leaving and they didn't do all the formalities. That means that you, you could be an accidental American and entitled to pay tax. I don't know quite how it works, but they can actually get in touch with the bank in your country and ask them to give your details so that they can act to so they can extract tax from you. The term may also sometimes be applied to people who definitely are not US citizens but have some sort of other connection with the country. For example, green card holders who moved back to their country of origin and let their green cards expire without formally cancelling their US immigration status. So you had a green card, it expired, you went back to your country, you're an accidental American and they'll be looking for you for tax. Or, and this is another way to criminalise, you realise that, because they'll call it fraud, even though you don't know you're an American, or even though you wouldn't even know that this rule applied. And sometimes it's not even your fault. 
Because like they're saying, if the parents left, and you wouldn't have known, anyway, or non-US citizens married to Americans abroad, such tenuous connections to the United States began to become a more salient issue in the late 2000s due to the Internal Revenue Service crackdowns, which were ostensibly aimed at tax invaders, tax evaders, hiding assets in secrecy jurisdictions, but ended up having much broader effects on people with US citizenship who resided in other countries as well as their families. These issues arrive from the unusual policy held by the US which imposes income tax obligations on worldwide income on anyone who holds US citizenship regardless of where that person resides or where that income is earned. That's some serious stuff. The case will challenge the 2010 Foreign Account Tax Compliant Act, FACTA in brackets, which requires foreign financial firms with US operations, including UK banks, to report information about US taxpayers to the IRS or face, or face huge fines. It is the latest fight back against the long arm of America's tax authority. A challenge is also on the horizon for the French Association of Accidental Americans, in brackets, AAA. The AAA's president, Fabien Lehagre, said his group will file a formal complaint with the European Commission as early as last month. It comes after the group lost an appeal in France in July. I think this article is about a month old. I've got so many topics to talk about. Sometimes I leave them to the side and I think, oh my God, I'm going to get to it. And then I don't. And then by the time you turn around, a month has gone. So sorry about the late publication of this. I hope the United Kingdom justice system will be more independent than the French courts this summer. Le Havre said. Law firm Mishkong de Rea has taken on the UK case for a client who alleges HMRC is breaching citizens' data protection and privacy rights by transferring vast amounts of financial and personal data to governments outside the EU. Factor is meant to root out tax dodgers hiding money offshore from the US which is the only country, aside from Eritrea, that taxes non-resident citizens on their global income. But Filippo Nocida, the lead lawyer in the case, says his client is not a tax dodger. Can you imagine, if you are a US citizen, no matter where you go in the world, you're liable for tax. On the money you earn or make, no matter where you're living, and even if you're not like you're going on a holiday, if you decided to live as elsewhere in the world permanently, you're still liable to the US for tax. And apparently, the US is the only country aside from Eritrea that taxes non resident citizens on their global income. I've never heard of that. The client who works at a university in northwest England is exempt from paying US taxes since she earns less than the 104,000 US dollars, the equivalent is 84,000 sterling pounds, benchmark for Americans living abroad. But like many US expats, she has paid thousands of pounds to a professional accountant only to confirm that she owes nothing to the US authorities. And that's a problem. You have to go to an accountant in order to get this sorted and it can cost you a bomb. However, FACTA still requires her information to be sent overseas without her permission, which her lawyers claim breaks the EU GDPR laws. Those are those data protection regulations. 
and puts her at risk of identity theft. Our client has no problem with measures to fight crime and tax evasions, Nasida said. Her issues are with the disproportionality of these measures and the breach of various fundamental data protection principles contained in the GDPR, which expose her to potential hacks and identity fraud. The client now in her early 40s married in Britain after finishing college and moving to the UK in 2000. In 2016, she received a letter from her bank warning she may owe the US tax and that her data would be sent to an internal revenue service via the HMRC. So I don't know when she was in America. While the client is ah, okay, while the client is not an accidental American, her crowdfunding page claims she is trying to protect the fundamental rights of accidental Americans and other compliant US citizens living abroad and is aiming to raise fifty thousand to fund her case. It's costing her a lot of money to fight this. Many accidental Americans are opting to renounce their U.S. citizenship, which involves filing six years of back taxes, rather than go through the costly accounting process every year. So it must be really expensive. Following the Guardian's coverage of the accidental American issue, the IRS announced it was giving a tax break to some American expats looking to renounce their citizenship. People with less than $2 million, in brackets, 1.6 million sterling pounds, in assets, who owe less than 25,000 US dollars, equivalent is 20,000 pounds, in back taxes, will have their tax bill waived by the IRS when they give up citizenship. However, groups including the AAA said the IRS initiative did not go far enough and failed to consider the 2000 US dollar plus bill for renouncing citizenship. And it's a big thing to renounce citizenship. You think, you know, they'd be glad if you renounce citizenship and it would be a quick process. It's not a quick process. And 2000 US dollars to renounce it. Responding to the legal challenge in the UK, HMRC said it does not discuss individual taxpayers. However, it defended FACTA, saying the law plays an important part in the multinational fight against tax avoidance and evasion. I mean, all well and good, but my goodness. Can you imagine any one of you, if you have a parent who was at any point in the United States and who may have had a green card, who may have lived there, who might have had, um, got, who were naturalized and then they moved back to their country. Can you imagine? There could be tax implications on your worldwide income. Supposing you've got rich or something. Supposing you won the lottery. America, you're always beholden to America. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. It is a bit long, but I thought it was important, you know, for anybody who may have ties with America that, you know, you need to be aware of this. And if you are, all well and good. But if you're not, that's what I'm here for, to raise awareness. That's all for now. Bye bye.